Hey guys, check out this scene this morning. Just so you know, we're a family that works together, travels together, plays together, and apparently <laughs> works together as well. She is working hard. Is she doing spelling? Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I can't do it. All right. Dad, I'll leave that in your very capable hands <laughs> for a second. <laughs> it's always friends houses because then you get to play with new toys that you haven't ever played with before. I mean, we feel that way too, right? So we're still at my friend's uh, Brooke's house. We did a lot yesterday. I hope to have a fun little video about smarter homes um, to post this weekend. So, uh, but it, it was really, really great. And I think uh, Brooke has amazing tips, amazing design tips, and just like fun things to think about that are really practical for your home. So um, I hope she'll kind of, you know, pop on Smarter News now and again and share those tips with you. In the meantime, we have three really interesting stories I just wanted to flag for you today. They're all, again, sort of a variety of different topics, but one that really caught my attention, and I don't know if you guys have seen these headlines about this so-called militia group that's been at the U.S. southern border trying to apprehend illegal border crossers. And it's very controversial, clearly, because the group is organized, it's armed, um, this is in New Mexico this time, the governor doesn't like it, the federal government doesn't like it. Although there's a couple things to know about that. What's interesting is when you read stories about this militia group, um, there's always this reference of, well, this has happened a lot in the past. The Associated Press would say, well, this has happened a lot in the past. And I was like, really? I was speaking to my husband about it this morning, who's a native Texan. He's like, oh yeah, this has been happening for years. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I didn't, you know, like, well, I, you know. So I think that is important context to know that over the years, whether it has been local ranchers or, uh, or organized groups, that in different states along the border, there has been this tension at times between um, you know, non-law enforcement trying to help enforce federal law, and that's the problem. A citizen's arrest, so if you wanted to arrest somebody that you saw doing something illegally, is determined, or is a different state to state, and it also um, can depend on the crime. So in this particular case in New Mexico, you're not really allowed to make a citizen's arrest for trespassing on private property. And I guess this would more or less fall into that category. The big takeaway now is that this militia group was asked to leave the private land that they're on. There's a question about where they're going next. You should know that no one in this militia group was arrested except for one person it looks like on an unrelated or a little bit different case charge, not necessarily for what they were doing. And the militia says, listen, we want to help. We keep on hearing that there's a crisis at the border and that manpower is an issue, so we want to come down and help because we're patriots. And then there are the other, the critics that say, you're not patriots, you're actually harassing uh, these folks that are coming across the border. The New Mexico governor had some pretty strong words for this particular group. The federal government, Customs and Border Patrol, as well as the Department of Homeland Security said, listen, we don't, we don't need this help. We can't have private citizens help us in this way. However, they've also said, you know, they've called this a crisis at the same time and talked about the need for more manpower. So, um, you know, I'm not, those seem to be two separate messages, um, but clearly they, Customs and Border Protection as well as the Department of Homeland Security want some oversight of this issue. And in one particular case, the ACLU is really against, obviously, this happening, said that this particular group was able to apprehend a group of several hundred people that were crossing the border at one time. So what the group is doing is holding, detaining some of these individuals until federal authorities can arrive, but apparently still that's not that's not allowed legally. That's not allowed. So just sort of an interesting side story. One of the big takeaways is we're seeing, what num here's again the numbers that I think really matter. The government in general counts a full fiscal year, October to September. So October of last year till September of this year will be a complete year. So it's not January to December like we're thinking of. And what they just said is, is when you look at the fiscal year, again, October to September of 2017 to 2018, at this time, we have more apprehensions, border apprehensions between October of 2018 and now than we did for the full year, full previous year. So 
the numbers keep going up. We're getting, I think we're at about 400,000 apprehensions at the U.S. and border already right now, and we still have months to go in the remaining fiscal years. So that's something that I think you should know about. So, you know, if you want to look at this very, um, you know, not use alarmist language, you have people, private citizens that are trying to help this issue. But there's a big question about whether or not they can do it legally and how they're doing it. And so will this continue? We'll see. Will it continue in other places besides New Mexico? We'll see. But I thought it was interesting enough for you to, to just, you know, kind of know what's going on. Another thing happened that we haven't seen in um, in uh, in the courts before is obviously this big opioid um, crisis is something that we've talked a lot about. Just yesterday, there were charges, criminal charges, felony charges filed against executives at a major pharmaceutical, a pharmaceutical distribution company. And Basically, what the feds are accusing the company of doing is not responding to concerns about large numbers of prescriptions being filed, um, requested in different parts of the country. That is very general, what I'm saying. But basically, what the feds are calling this um, this major billion dollar pharmaceutical company is a drug trafficker. And they're saying that they're responsible in part for so many of these painkillers being on the market and not being paying attention enough to who's requesting them, how many are being requested at different locations. The pharmaceutical company said, listen, um, there's an opioid crisis and a lot of people are requesting painkillers in response to that crisis as well, even for treatment. So, you know, we they admitted wrong. They did admit wrong, the company, but some of the executives, um, one pl pled guilty and there's a question kind of about where the case is going to go from here, but it is like the first time that we're seeing the federal government be so strong against a pharmaceutical company and a, distribu uh, a distribu distributor of uh, pharmaceuticals. And the, the government says this is what we have to do. We have to crack down. Everyone has to take responsibility for these drugs being on the market, even the people that are distributing them. It's kind of interesting. Um, two just final other stories just want to also flag for you today. You know, we've talked a lot about measles in New York, um, but now there's enough cases for health officials in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, to say that there's a measles outbreak there. Remember, the CDC says an outbreak is more than three cases. It looks like there's a suspected five cases in LA County. This is important because it would be the largest metropolitan area, sprawling area, to have a measles outbreak. So we're paying attention to that. One doctor said, you know, a lot of people say, well, measles aren't really that dangerous. They don't kill, you know, it doesn't really kill you. That's one of the arguments for maybe not getting vaccinated. And one doctor, local doctor, said, you know, when we had a measles outbreak in Disneyland, do you remember that happened a couple of years ago? Um, about 20% of the people went to the hospital. So we don't want to see that again, and, you know, they're concerned. And finally, just one other thing I think you should know, um, back in New York City, you're going to see a lot of headlines about the stock market reaching highs that we haven't seen for the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. Just a reminder, you know, I, I hesitate covering the stock market day to day. I did cover it just to, just to cover the record high because it can change so often. Um, but you know, there's a couple things that investors are looking at, looking at a, a strong economy, pretty good reports, earnings reports. Those are like report cards for companies and, um, interest rates not necessarily going up. And so this has pushed stocks higher. So uh, one of the big questions investors are asking, and you'll see that today on the site is, well, where do we go from here? And is this okay? <laughs> there's both excitement about a record high, but like, hmm everything, is this okay? Or, you know, is this what stocks are really worth? And so we should pay a little attention to the stock market on that today. All right, guys. So hope you have a great day. Those are a couple different stories I think you should know about. They'll be posted on the site shortly. We're just kind of doing some uh, just last minute fact checking and uh, spell checking because that's what I need. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> but those are three stories I think you should know about today. What's going on at the U.S. southern border, record high numbers, along with citizens trying to participate in making arrests, but it's not necessarily legal. You also have a, a, a first-of-its-kind case against a pharmaceutical company. You have measles presence in L.A. County, which is a big deal because it's such a large metropolitan area and it's such a contagious disease. And you have record highs at the stock market that, you know, worth noting, but just to be cautiously. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later.